Welcome back to Press Here. Your Facebook or Twitter is likely full of people's pictures, portraits, taken by Lenza using artificial intelligence to turn photographs into pretty stunning art. Even more impressive is a different kind of AI called Dolly, where you type in what you want to see. Let's say a man with a microphone in front of a bookcase, but this time with dragons, and it creates that art on the fly. Let's try Bowling Alley on Mars with cats. Get that. Is it art? I don't know if I'm qualified to say, but I am curious about what artists think about it. Agnieszka Pilat is an artist who incorporates technology into her works, including painting by robot. Her show at the Modernism Gallery in San Francisco runs through Thursday, December 22nd. Thank you for joining us. Let's start with this idea of artificially co uh, created computer art with no artistic input other than, than what the user types. Total AI, what do you make of that kind of art? Uh, yes, we, we, we've seen the loss of this the whole flood in the last uh, couple of weeks, right? Uh, with uh, Lance, yeah. especially. Um, I think it's actually technology is interesting, but I think it's a very interesting commentary culturally what's happening. That we are in this like me society moment and uh, we love to use technology to highlight our individualism. And I think it's interesting to have technology do that. And of course, technology has always had an effect on art. I mean, the camera is almost 200 years old and Portraiture, you know, artists were trying to get everything exactly perfect, essentially make it look like a photograph before they even knew what photographs were. Along come the cameras, and they're so perfect that artists move on to other things like impressionism. Technology has always had an effect on art. Oh, yes, absolutely. So, like, a lot of artists now are in a place they deplore, uh, you know, technology being introduced uh, into the arts. But I agree. Uh, the example I always give is actually painting tubes. So the impressionism before artists could come, go outside and just press from a tube and get fresh oil paint, they had to be in their studios, mixing uh, paints and being chemists. So uh, so I think to, techno AI today is was exactly what was happening with paint tubes. It's no different, it's just a tool. I hadn't even thought of that, that the actual technology of literally the paint itself changed the way that people paint. They could actually look at the tree that they were painting. Oh, you could, exactly. And then imagine if back then people were like accusing artists, well, you're not even making your own paint. What kind of artist are you? <laughs> right. So I think it's the same about technology. Now, uh, it just, you know, uh, art is like an place for early adapt new technologies and experiment. So I think it's wonderful that's what's happening now. Now there is AI uh, that can do a lot of things. I was speaking with a, a musician uh, who was talking about AI that could create music. Just you tell it what kind of mood you want. And she does music for car commercials, for instance. And and you can tell the computer, you know, give me something that kind of evokes, you know, an afternoon drive down a, a windy road near the beach and, and the computer will do it. So I do understand that artists might have some concern over computers replacing what it is they do. Uh, yes, that said, as an artist, there is so much, you know, me, uh, work that like I would like to have automated, like mixing paints, for example, right? So that takes a lot of time. So I think it just what's going to happen is we have to adapt to these new tools and just uh, really create even better work and going to have more time because the tools are easier. Now, speaking of tools, you use robots uh, from uh, Boston Dynamics in some of your art. But to be clear, it, the robots are an extension of you, right? I mean, the robots are painting, but it's you who's doing the movement or telling the robots how to move. Have I got that right? Yes, correct. So they are, they're like an extension of my arm. And I find the working with robots very interesting because you know in limits how i can paint because of just the technical aspects of it but the robots make a lot of mistakes in painting so paintings are full of mistakes and the mistakes are the art actually so that's what makes it interesting they're not it's not a printer it's an actual machine in real world so 
um, two images are never the same. And that's the paradox I love in my work that uh, you would expect from a machine that the work is repetitive, uh, it's perfect, it's identical, but in fact, it's totally untrue. It's very, it's very different, it's plenty of mistakes in unexpected, I call them the moment ghost in the machine when the programming doesn't quite work. And that would bring humanity closer to machine. I think it's very interesting uh, a paradox. Now, have you played with some of the uh, Lenza uh, app and those just striking <laughs> portraits that it's able to do? Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't played with it uh, myself, but uh, I've seen lots of friends uploading images. Uh, well, it's interesting. I do think that um, there is a you know uproar again in art community that you, that for very minimum amount of money people are using model, models that were trained on their data right so uh, all you see is the computer really learned from human artists. Uh, that said, I think everyone is who's having these portraits done by Lensa right now, they would never go to an artist and spend money to have their portrait taken. So I think that money is it's not being taken away from artists at all. Yeah, and it, it does make an appreciation, I think, sometimes for, for, for portraiture when you see yourself in a portrait. Uh, it, it's just rather striking and, and, and amazing. The other question I suppose that, that artists will have to ask themselves is, you know, who owns the art if, if there's a, a blend of technology and art? I mean, after all, in, in your case, uh, you're telling the robot what to do, but in some ways the robot was involved as well. The robot's not in sentient being in this case, but, but it has a little piece of ownership as well. Yeah, so like, so, you know, portraiture is also very interesting. We were talking about portraiture earlier. Uh, portraiture really uh, is important because of patronage. So without, pa without patrons, there would be no art. And if you look historically at portraiture, it kind of follows uh, power in society. So it comes from religious, from aristocracy, perhaps wealthy merchants, and the Warhol celebrity portraits. I grew up in Eastern Europe, so portraiture was always working men and women. That's where the power was. And I think now we're in the hyper me society. That's why number one portrait is selfies. But the future is the machine. So I, I like to say that I work for the machine. It's the machine that is my patron. So the ultimately, the machine does own the work. So that's the concept. So lastly, where do we go from here? I mean, what's the what's the next step or, or, or where does art go from here? I know that's a very broad question, but what do you think? Um, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know because again, like, like artists are early adopters. So every new technology that, that's come on, uh, yeah, just we just like to explore, but it kind of technology drives it, I think. Art, in a sense, just follows the art of technology. It always has, even though it seems it doesn't. It always follows technology. Agnieszka Pilat, I appreciate you being with us this morning. Agnieszka's uh, show, Modernism Gallery, is in San Francisco, and it runs through Thursday, December 2nd. <laughs>